this is like a very uh, you know complicated problem um and you know lots of people have like i think ex- expectations uh the, their expectation from clogs are so much like um i mean especially like i mean our users as soon as they turn on distributed tracing they start to kind of like rely too much on the timestamps uh in my experience without sort of like realizing that um, our clocks are not accurate. And, you know, clocks are not accurate in general, like between any machines, like even in the same machine, you know, like you may have like different clock sources and so on. But as soon as we start to provide uh, to give people like more visibility into, you know, like what's going on by distributed tracing, I think like they sort of like forget the fact that those timestamps are not uh, really accurate. Uh, One of the difficulties is there's instrumentation, um, but there's not instrumentation all across. So people rely on the differences between, you know, distributed trace spans. So sometimes like uh, try to like estimate like the network latency and sort of thing. So they started to rely too much on uh, the latency represented in the distributed traces, even though the clocks are not accurate. So uh, those durations represented on the distributed traces are not accurate. Uh, one thing that they ca- came up um, is some of, you know, part of like some of the conversations that I was having in the last couple of years was what can we do is like probably not to do much because uh, we don't have like much of our control over like, you know, the sources of the clocks um, and so on and so on. But at least we may try to do um provide some visibility in terms of, um, for example, at Google, we have a very interesting type API. Uh, it's called True Time, and it's explained in some of our white papers again and again. So at Google, if you ask time from True Time, it returns you an interval rather than the current time, time stamp, because it already acknowledges the fact that like we don't necessarily know what the time is, but it estimates it would be somewhere between here and there. Uh, so you can actually rely <laughs> that like you are somewhere in between the interval. And my idea was like, hey, can we just use this when we're instrumenting things? So like rather than like exposing user, like this event actually happened here, we give them a buffer. It might have happened here or there. So they always like, especially if you visualize it, uh, they will be able to uh, recognize the problem, uh, recognize that there is clock drift, the instrumentation data is not accurate all the time, and they can't rely on the, you know, differentiation between durations to calculate like network and latency and so on. At least they will be able to acknowledge. So that was the initial idea. People thought that I think it's more involved than that, you know, simple thing, but uh, that's my initial idea, at least to improve the visualization so people acknowledge the problem.